Hey, Vinyl Community, Jeff here, and I just got back recently uh, from a trip. I took a trip, and I drove about six hours south to go see a band with a friend of mine. Um, we went to see Striper, and it was the last day of their tour. Anyway, long story short, uh, I hit some record stores along the way, and while I was there, and this next few series, next few videos are going to be documenting that. First up is the first record store I hit when we were in transit down to the area and we were probably an hour and a half away from reaching Myrtle Beach where we were headed and uh, we stopped and met up with a friend but we stopped and grabbed a bite to eat and went to this record store so check out what we got here. Hey everybody Jeff here your man out and about to town yes we are out and about so I am uh, my wife and I are headed out of town we were on our way to Myrtle Beach South Carolina to see Striper coming this weekend. We're going down there to see him with some friends. And as we're traveling down there, we stopped in Wilmington. And while we were gonna stop in Wilmington to grab a bite to eat, I shot Greg Hayes from Gerda Music a message. And I said, hey, dude, um, I'm gonna be in town to eat lunch. And you know, got any uh, recommendations for either a good barbecue place or a good record store. And he told me this record store, I had mapped out another one, but we're going to this one here called Yellow Dog Discs. He said it's a little bigger than the one that I was going to go to. So I'm checking it out. We swung by here. And at the end of the shopping center, there's a place to eat. And we're going to head in here. And then uh, Greg invited me over to see his new warehouse, which he just opened up recently. And that'll be another video. We're going to get to see the inside of Girder Music and everything that goes on there. So anyway, let's check out the record store. All right, so in a nutshell, um, it was a pretty big store. I was surprised they had a lot, they had a big metal section, but like one little rack of used records. Um, the store tended to mainly have a lot of new stuff and kind of a minimal amount of used. So, you know, I didn't take, I, I was looking through a lot and they had a lot of used like uh, pop and stuff, but not much in the metal or things like that. And so I did flip through there, and as seen in the video, I did pick up, immediately, right there in the front of the door, they had the recently received um, U stuff. And I did pick up the two that I think that I showed there in the video. I got the Screaming Blue, Screaming Blue Murder by Girl School. It was a reasonable price, and I thought, yeah, I need some more Girl School. I didn't have this one. And so this was one of the only ones, and it was in excellent condition. So I did go ahead and grab that one, and then I did also grab The Hypnotic Eye by Tom Petty. Um, this one is uh, well, a little over 10 years ago. Um, I love this album. I um, have had my eye on the vinyl edition for quite a while. I think it's still on my wish list. I better take it out. And uh, they had it there for a reasonable price. I'm like, okay, well, that's cool. I'll pay that for a Tom Petty album. And again, it was like in like new condition. So I went ahead and grabbed that. Now, then I went down and I was looking in the metal and the used things along that line. And this one I grabbed, they had this and I quickly looked up, cause this has been on my wish list for quite a few months now. These are the new reissues. Um, I got the Lionheart by Saxon. It's the only one they had there. They had a bunch of other Saxon, but it was the only one of the new music and vinyl reissues that came out earlier, I believe this year, maybe late last year. And I was surprised because it's been on my wish list at Amazon for a while, but the price has hovered in the upper 30s, closer to 40, which is normal for music on vinyl stuff, but occasionally they'll drop down. And so I've been waiting for the drop and just not making a move. Well, this store had this and other music on vinyl releases 
and they were just over thirty dollars. So it was it was like a six dollars cheaper than I've ever seen it. So I went ahead and grabbed this because I thought, you know, I definitely want to have this. They only had this one of those new reissues. Um, this gives me two of the recent reissues. I think I showed Forever Free a while back. And there's some other ones out there that I'm hoping to run across one day. Solid Ball Rock, and I believe is one of them, and some other ones from this era. So I went ahead and grabbed that one for a decent price, in my opinion. And then this one was the mystery, because I don't knew, I assumed I thought what this was when I first saw it, but I don't know if this is a valid release. I got Down to Earth by Ozzy. Now, I looked it up on Discogs while I was there. It is listed. It's a German version import. Um, everything about it, and it, you know, kind of made me wonder. The, uh, the the album itself has the same center ring. At first, I thought maybe somebody was selling this from the box set that came out a couple years ago. Because I have bought individual albums that people have sold off of that box set. I thought, oh, somebody's doing that here. It has the same center logo. But the box set, all the albums were color variants and splatters and all this stuff. So it's not that. It has a barcode. Everything looks legit. It's not a cheap cover. It doesn't look like one of those bootlegs. Um, somebody on Discogs, when they listed it, said... I'm assuming this is an unofficial release, but I don't know the details. Everything about it looks valid. I know some bootlegs do that, but a lot of times bootlegs just have cheap covers that are just carbon copies of the CD. To, you know, if there's a barcode, it tends to be of the old CD. But everything about this, you know, everything from the dates and all of that, you know, are all valid looking. So I don't know. Maybe it's a bootleg from the box set and they added an actual barcode to it. Um, anyway, I went ahead and grabbed it because I thought, well, and typically a lot of bootlegs tend to be color vinyl. And, and this one wasn't. It's black and it was in brand new condition. And I, I don't know. I don't know if this is real or not, but it's in my collection. So, And if it was an unofficial release, if it was a bootleg... At least most of the time, those bootlegs, when I find them either online or at my local store. My local store sells bootlegs, but it would be twice this cost. And online tends to be a bit more than this. So that's the other thing. Uh, the price was reasonable for an album, uh, way reasonable if it was a bootleg that people sell those unofficial releases. So I don't know. But I grabbed it, and because, you know, it's pretty cool. So that's about all. Now, as I was checking out... Because I'm like, okay, I looked through so much of that store on our break. And uh, as we were checking out, my wife's like, oh, did you see the records on the wall? That was a mistake, but I didn't act on it. And I immediately caught my eye. They had an album that I didn't even know was released on vinyl. They wanted 100 bucks for it. I quickly looked it up because I was baffled. When did this come out? And this album literally was released in January of this year. But it sold out so quick. And it's an unknown band that most of you don't know, but I won't even go into the details there. But it was a double record set. It was not even on the website anymore. It totally sold out. Probably was worth 100 bucks, but I'm not... It takes a lot for me to think of anything that worth that. And then I went down the line a little bit further, and they had a Living Sacrifice album that I know they've been reissuing those. I picked up the two recent reissues of Living Sacrifice, but this was one that was reissued like 10 years ago that I, was before I started buying vinyl. I missed out on... And they wanted 70 bucks for it. A little more reasonable, but still, it was a single album. I just couldn't pull the trigger. I looked it up online, and you can't touch one, at least not on Discogs, for under $80. So it was a good price, but again, I didn't act. But yeah, the things they have on the wall were pretty impressive. So that was it, though. We did that, and then we went next door and ate. And the rest of the story will come with the next video. Anyway, that's it for this one, though. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you later. Rock on and rock hard.